all here. So, last time on the Islands of the Moon, uh, the fearless band of heroes defied death, slashing claws, gnashing teeth, and horrific, agonizing poison to rescue testing injury. <laughs> Testing. Testing. Can testing. anyone hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Right. Thank you, Christ. No one was responding. <laughs> Sorry. So I was in the middle of a monologue, starting the game. So, um, yes, the party uh, defied death, uh, gnashing teeth and slashing claws to rescue the um, beleaguered Sindri from his predicament, hanging pantsless by a backpack strap from a branch above a raging, ravenous pack of feral ghouls. Uh, the branch began to snap and Sindri began to slip closer to what looked to be the most agonizing death possible. Several attempts were made to pin him to the branch to maybe give him some more time. Um, there was a spell cast, slow fall, which was gonna uh, lower him very gently and slowly into the uh, waiting mouths and slashing claws and talons of the of the, uh, the ghouls. The party charged in using several different distraction techniques and they managed to peel off the main force of the ghouls just in time for the branch to snap and Sindri to fall to the floor. Though three ghouls still remained clustered around Sindri, he took an enormous amount of damage. Was slashed and clawed and bitten and chomped on, parts of him were eaten. But the party managed to prolong his suffering long enough <laughs> for them to vanquish the ghouls, with Sindri uh, being revived several times. Uh, once they managed to get um, Sindri free of the ghouls, they realized that Sindri had been enormously poisoned. His, uh, his blood has com been completely befouled by the several different ghoul bites all across his body. Several of the other members of the party also suffering from ghoul bites. Um, it was in a harrowing escape from the strangle forms. Chased every step of the way by ghouls, feral, ravenous beasts chasing you through the, uh, the twisted maze of sharp thorns and grasping briar bushes of the strangle thorns. When finally, when you thought all was lost, the huge pack of ravenous ghouls descending on your very heels, you burst free from the strangle thorns and find the main road again. You realize you're about an hour away from Braskov and from Sindri being saved and healed. You reckon Sindri has about an hour left to live. So the mechanic was, Bobby, um, because of the vast amount of damage you suffered, your hit point maximum was temporarily reduced to three, <laughs> for whatever it was. Um, but you've been so horrifically poisoned by the several ghoul bites that every hour, uh, 3d8 damage is done to you by the poison. So, the party needs to get you back to Braskov before the hour is up. Otherwise, you're going to take an immense amount of poison damage that quite possibly could kill you. Outright. Quite probably. Quite probably. I mean, if I roll three ones, it's we're all cush. If not, then it's <laughs> it's it's pretty bad. So anyway, Torlek is the one that uh, was looking at you, and I believe it was Godfrey that was carrying you. Um, so, Torlek, like, you had an idea about using your spare the dying cantrip. So, do you want to use a medicine, a quick medicine check for me, please? Certainly. Medicine, medicine, medicine. Ooh, plus five. Fifteen. Fifteen, this is great. Okay, so you believe that if you constantly keep your hand on Sindri the entire time, making your way back to town, you believe you will be able to just about counteract the effects of this poison then that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna keep contact with him and just keep pouring spare the dying into him as much as possible wonderful 
So this is going to require you and Godfrey marching pace. I'm going to need a dexterity check from the both of you, please. Oh, Christ. Oh, fuck. For you to make it back to town with Torlek being able to keep a hand on. I don't believe Torlek is strong enough to carry Sindri all the way. No, my so strength have is, have is plus zero. Godfrey carry Sindri. Or possibly uh, uh, one of the oh! others helping out. <laughs> Uh, well, I rolled a 15 minus 1, so 40. I rolled a 1 minus 1. So, it's so that's zero. a max zero. <laughs> You're like dexterity. Never heard of it. So, if he dies, he dies. You so pull his head off. The trek back to Brascom is about an hour down the main road, back across the wide stone bridge over the Vlatter River. You get to within sight of the main gates. There is maybe a hundred yards between you and the main gates. Weariness and the exhaustion of the fight washes over you, Torlek. For a split second, you feel your arm slip. You try to correct it, then don't see a big stone in the path in front of you. You trip, fall to the floor, breaking contact with Sindri. The rest of you see this and realize Sindri's not long for this world. So, what I'm going to need is for you all to shout out one thing that you think would help in this situation. Or I'm going to need Ben to make a much better dexterity check than that to get back up. God, uh, Torlek needs to get back up and touch Sindri. Well, I assume that I feel him break contact since I'm carrying you would, he, you would, You wouldn't feel him break contact unless you're walking side by side. You would certainly hear the heavily armoured chap eat <laughs> shit behind oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, since I'm carrying him, I'll just cast cure wounds into him. Outstanding, outstanding. Let's have some, let's have some cure wounds goodness from you, please. Yeah, I think. Ooh. I rolled a six plus. Well, that's good. Uh, plus four, so ten. Oh. <laughs> he takes eighty-four damage. <laughs> oh. I rolled an 11 damage, so Sindri <laughs> takes one point of damage from the oh. poison coursing through his body. It's counteracted by your perfectly timed cure wounds. Okay. Sindri has scant moments left. Suffering is prolonged a little while longer, long enough for Torlek to pick himself up off the floor and for the rest of you to make your way back into Braskov itself. Now... Thanks, Godfrey. <laughs> that was close. Got you got there, you did it. You managed to solve my poison problem. <laughs> so what do you guys want to do? You're back in Braskov. Get him to Teleki. Yeah, I've got to go and see the priest. Do you yeah. all want to go there to see well, the I priest? Think, I think most of us are suffering from ghoul bites anyway. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, there's a few who got ghoul bites. Oh, yes. So I believe it is... It's Torlek and Jessil. I've got ghoul bites, I believe, aren't you? Yes. Yep. My hit yeah. point max is reduced. Does that mean I've got one? You'll have one as well, then, yes. I, I'm okay. Uh, I'm going to go see Marjorie. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't get any chomps. Yeah. So you would all take four points of damage as the poison courses through your veins. I have a slight problem. <laughs> no, oh. Oh, what is your slight problem? Uh, uh, I started with three hit points. Oh dear. So, as you get back through the main gates, there's a sigh of relief from the party, and you turn immediately make your way towards the Temple of the Fallen. There's a slight exhale from Jess as she turns deathly pale. And can, I, 
to the can floor. I, am I incapacitated at the moment? You're unconscious. You're right? completely out of it, yeah. Awesome. You're completely out of it. Awesome. Uh, okay, okay, since, the, since, the, um, since the other priest is occupied keeping the, the bard alive, I guess I'll turn around and cast healing word on the one that fell down so I don't have to touch. I, don't, I can keep a hold of uh, what's his face. What's up there? I'm getting confused. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, healing word. Thank you. Yes. Uh, ooh, I rolled a four plus four, so eight. Nice. Outstanding. Wonderful, thank Heal you. Healing is on point today. But that's all you get. I'm out of spells now, so everyone else that falls down is dead. <laughs> I mean, I have healing Wonderful. word also and two spell slots left, but I'm using all I of can't my. Can't let go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, I forgot. It is raining still. So, yes, you now, you <gasps> breathe a sigh, a huge, big, gasping uh, breath, Jessiel, and you realize, like, you're faced out in the mud in the main street in Braskov. Uh, pain coursing through your body as if your blood is on fire. Uh, the rest of you feel absolutely god-awful. Bar Arwen and Leo seem to be all right. You're just tired. Uh, where are we? Is, yeah, the uh, I believe yes, you were fighting. You were fighting in the dawn. So it is about. Yes, it's coming up to sort of mid afternoon, early dusk, as you enter the streets of Braskov. You can see. Uh, the town's populace are about their business, despite the bad weather. Everyone seems to be just milling about. You draw a few uh, concerned glances from people wandering back and forward as you wander in, and they see their uh, valiant heroes, one of them collapse, and the other sort of completely out of it uh, in a strong man's arms. Uh, but they realize that you have to get to the healer quickly, so none of them sort of uh, get in the way or ask you what's happened. They, they understand the need for healing and the need to go and see Teleki, so you are free to do as you wish in that respect. Uh, if you all Are you all going there, Leo? Arwen, are you going as well? Are you going I, I might the ride. Yeah, I was gonna go to see uh, yeah. the donkey, but um, he's like, you might not be carried at some point, so I'm just gonna fight well for now. Make sure they get their own food. No problem. Okay, so for Bobby, just because it's been a while, I will describe the Chapel of the Fallen yet again. So you make your way to the Chapel of the Fallen with its sturdy stone and timber walls. The exterior suggests endurance and strength in its construction. And you could reason that this would be a fine place to defend if the need arose. Judging by the scratches in the wood and the chips in the stone, it has served this purpose at least once. Why can I not say purpose? Normally, <laughs> it's been purpose. Purpose. The interior, however, is warm and inviting, lit by dozens of candles and many small alcoves and set upon sconces, creating a starburst pattern with a half on the far wall as its center. The floor is well-worn flat stone slabs with the man-sized shrine at the center. Depictions of candles, pine trees, knights and scholars surround the plinth and atop it sits a small fire in a bronze bowl, burning with some sort of enchantment as no fuel is evident. You see the familiar form of Teleki Boyai. As you enter, he turns towards you and goes, What has happened? What is wrong? Ghouls, Teleki, hurry! <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I was talking over you. Ghouls, Teleki, hurry! Ghouls, quick, bring, bring him in, bring him in. Who of you have ghoul bites? Who doesn't? We fast. I don't have ghoul chomps. He gestures towards the small area that uh, Sindri and uh, Jess are familiar with. It's where you went when you first got here. Uh, I'll, I'll carefully over. put Sindri down and wherever he's indicating, and then I'm just going to collapse heavily into his seat. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, so first of all, he will do this spell. He says, those of you that are bitten, please join hands with the little one and myself. He gets you all in a circle. He says, repeat after me. Bathe in the light and be healed. Quickly now. Bathe in the light and be healed. Bathe in the light and be healed. Bathe in the light and be healed. Wonderful, wonderful. You can see this huge now, a beautiful warm golden aura just sort of explodes out of um, Teleki's chest in this beautiful starburst. This radiant aura just sort of surrounds all of you. And Sindri lying on the uh, the small sort of makeshift bed at the back. And there's a warmth and a tingling comes over your uh, your limbs. For those of you that have your, the ghoul bites, you, you you feel the burning in your blood sort of subside. There's a numbness over where the bite uh, over where the bite wound was. As you look down to your different wounds, you see that the wound is completely healed up. A beautiful. Like pristine skin, as if you were never even touched over the top. Uh, there was a slight trickle of the black eye core, sort of fizzling away, just around the wounds. And uh, you all take fucking hell. Uh, that is damage and die. Uh, tw- Twenty points of healing. Okay. Yes. Uh, what about our uh, max hit point reduction? Is that gone now? Or? Your max hit points. Return to normal, including yes. you, Sindri. You lucky, lucky bastards. <laughs> but before he lets you go, Sindri... <laughs> Give you a good spanking. <laughs> he looks you over, realises the depth of the poisoning in your blood is quite severe. Do you see uh, Teleki um, places his hand across your heart? Those of you that watch, he mutters something under his breath. (laughs) You're fucked. (laughs) Almost imperceivable. Uh, Those of you that got good enough hearing will hear him say, it's a light purge the dark there's a quick boom, like a, almost like a defibrillator going off. Boom. Uh, Simply doesn't move, however, but there's, a, there's this like a black cloud of looks like spores come out of it and sort of dissipate in their golden shimmers above him. Uh, you can see that the veins that were pulsing with this horrible black sort of poison in Sindri's neck and across his body uh, have all subsided. And he looks to be, he looks to be his old viable, not viable, his old virile self, yet again. And Teleki looks and says, oh, that has tired me. See oh, what grievous wounds you came in with. The ghoul bites, the poison, the blood, something foul. Normally they take time to, de- to heal, depending on the severity. Bites like this one, like Sindri has suffered, usually would take months to heal. It seems as though this hollow ground does something to our healing magic. This was unexpected. But, but for two Is there anything else I can help any of you with? <clears throat> I'm glad you got here when you did. It was almost the end for this one. Aye, one more week and it would have been over. <laughs> He's laid something. Week? Hours. He had scant minutes left. I was just gonna slump down go? next to the altar. Just be like, thank <laughs> you, Father. <laughs> it is, it is, please, it is my pleasure, it is my honor. It is my duty to help you, you helped us so much. Where did you go to get these wounds? What were you doing? Yeah, what were you doing, old boy? 
Everyone just looks. It's interesting. You're looking at me. Am I yes. awake now? I thought I was. I thought you are I was awake out. now. You are awake. You? Shrugs. Shrugs. Yeah, Make a one. history check. Make a history <laughs> check, Sindri, with disadvantage. <laughs> Yep. Nine. You remember Shrugs. what Paul? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. The last thing you remember was being in the Golden Stag Inn, uh, beginning to celebrate and have a drink with everyone. I was, was going to say, last thing I remember is going back there from the harrowing visit to that Blood Mage's place. Yes. It's the last thing you remember. So again, I repeat, shrug. shrug. Mm. Maybe next time you will be so quick to risk your life in a drunken uh, post. Shrug. shrug. <laughs> I'm a bit shell shocked. I feel like I've been remembered by a, um, a, a morning star mace, and I don't know how or why. That can be arranged. Shrug. <laughs> Torlek's just face in hands at this point. Just, oh my f <laughs> <laughs> the last time we do that. Seems as though you all need to rest. Take as long as you need here. You do not wish to be forced coming with your exploits, which means that it's absolutely fine. Um, let me know if there's anything else you need. I will. I will have to go and rest myself and make myself a small bite to eat and maybe a, some tea. I'll be I, in the back. I, I kind of look over and just sort of say, thanks. I don't know what's going on. I feel like shit, but I have a feeling that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So, thanks. <laughs> you are very welcome, but my part in this was minimal. It was your friends, your compatriots, that managed to get you from wherever you were with such grievous wounds back here. I say... I say sorry. Sorry, everybody. Don't know what happened or what got on, but clearly I was a liability. Jess, I'm sorry it sounds... <laughs> you don't look too great. The others, I'm sure that you had a hand in getting me back here, but I am sincerely sorry. Thank you. Steely silence greets in <laughs> Fine. Fine. <laughs> I think we should at least give him his pants back, though. No, yeah, no. Sin well, has got all that stuff. Yeah, no, I'll, no. I, I'll just sort of stand up and, and give him all of his equipment, which I've gathered up on the route to go mm. <laughs> to retrieve. So I lost, I was, I lost all my gear. Out. <laughs> yeah, you lost everything, mate. Pretty much everything. The only thing you don't have is your trousers. They did not retrieve those. That's fine. You're currently I'm... sitting there in your in your britches, which are heavily soiled. <laughs> OK, well, you know, kind of take them off. <laughs> <laughs> They're soiled. <laughs> take them off. I mean, yeah, so, he's pressed the rest of the really quickly to try and stop you doing that. Storage. He's shirt cocking it about in the Chapel of Light now. Chapel of the Fallen, sorry. God damn it. Show some respect, fool. New <laughs> once, please. Shrug. I'm not a whole 100% with it. I don't imagine I'd just get up and be completely compensmentous. So, yeah. I, I look at my soil kecks. I start to take a wash. Jess comes to sort of do what she does best and try to stop me doing something I'll regret. And everyone else could just roll their eyes at me. <laughs> oh, I'm rolling my eyes too. I know that. I know that. But you're actively doing something whilst rolling your eyes. As always. <laughs> Okay. So, is there anything you guys would like to achieve now you've come back to Braskov after your quick foray into the Strangle Thorns? Do any of you need reminded of what was said last time you were here? Or do you want to go and speak to someone um, to remind yourselves? I think for... We can we'll play it out or I can just tell you what was said because it was only maybe... 10, 12 hours ago that you had the conversation? I think what would you guys like? For Sindri's benefit, it's probably a good idea to recap the geography of the region and stuff. You know? Right. Because he wasn't here for that, was he? 
When you were in the Golden Star Glass, you were speaking to Tivana, and she was letting you know of some of the threats, some of the Im imminent threats that threatened Braskov, um, as they now believe that they were a huge target, uh, as normally areas of hallowed ground are hidden in secretive places, whereas Braskov, people know where it is, the forces of darkness sort of saw what was going on, um, they believe that they are probably the next the next big target for a stomping now that they've become hallowed. They have no idea sort of what the physics and chemistry of being hallowed ground is, how much protection it offers them, uh, if it can be uh, undone or shrank, they don't know. Um, so she said, uh, she asked you all if you would help. Um, you all agreed, uh, pretty much. And she said there was three big main threats. Uh, there is the ghouls of the Stranglethorns to the west, um, which you had a little jaunt into. And she said the best person to talk to about that is Vaant, the Goliath woodcutter. Um, the Hagsmire uh, to the south, uh, with the the undead uh, and the fetches down there. Um, so the Hagsmire is the south where the uh, foul place where no living thing should venture. Uh, Poyana and Zivoy are the best to speak to about them. And she told you where to look for them. And then there's the Black Oaks uh, to the east. Uh, and Stizzler, Atzi, is the best one to talk to about them. Uh, yeah, sorry, here we go. Goose of the Strangle Fawns, the Flesh Eaters of the Hagsmire, and the Poisoned Fae of the Black Oaks. So they were, oh. the, they were the three things she told you about. She also told you about secret option number four, um, which is the um, the gathering of Strigoi in the Breakspears, which are far to the east. Leo and Arwen passed through the Breakspears Pass, which is a bit fur much further south than uh, the area uh, Tivano was pointing you to. Uh, they pass you pass through the Breakspears on your way here. Uh, you know that she pointed you up, like further up the north towards the coast, where the Strogoi are gathering. So she kind of gave you four options, things to do, um, that she asked you to help with. Or y'all could do none of those and uh, go your own way. We also oh. were, were thinking about that protection um, ritual that uh, yes. Jess was reading about, weren't we? Yeah. It's kind of mm -hmm. useless unless we can find an ice dragon hog. That's it. But not a pseudo dragon. Yeah, thing. It's, it's not, not dragon. quite a dragon, yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah. Tugarin? Tugarin. Tugarin. Yeah, there was quite a shopping list. Yeah. There was that, three gallons of Karzak Bile, and the Soul. Karzak Bile! The, the Soul one is the only one that sounds like it might be attainable, mm -hmm. at this point. The Nocknitsa. No, oh, the Scarecrow quite specific. Mm. It's quite specific as well. So. Yeah, the Scarecrow, the, 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 scare, the Nocknitsa um, Soul. I mean, we could go back to the ghoul woods, we've already killed some of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are quite, you know, they're in smaller numbers now, I guess. We had a start. <laughs> yeah, not a second half. Yeah. Well, maybe we should speak to Teleki and the, the City Watch and say, look, can we, if, if we're going to do this, is there any support you can give us? I mean... If Teleki can cure festering wounds at the drop of a hat, you know what I mean? He can only do it in the hollow ground, though. Is it only in the hollow ground he can do it? Right, okay. Hmm. I think so. I'm sure, Glenn said that last time. Oh. Yeah, I, I, he just said that wounds like that would be. normally take months to heal. Yes. But he managed to do it instantaneously in the hollow ground. Uh, he's got some pretty serious healing on him. Mm. So the wounds, if the 
what you would gather from it was that the wounds themselves would heal up, like straight away from uh, cure wounds or whatever whatever was cast. Um, but the blood poisoning itself would linger, um, and that, that's the thing that would take months to fix. Well, I'd like to suggest, guys, that the first order of business is Golden Stag for food and rest, because we're all pretty ruined after that little encounter, aren't we? <sighs> well, I'm back at full health now, but I've got no spells. So. Yeah, I can do with a nap. You with a long rest. Good long rest. Wonderful. Uh, Owen, are you going to see Modra? Yeah, I think I'll go from Simodra and go for rest and stuff, yeah. Alright. Chuck you over here to the Golden Stag. Uh, you can see that the as you enter the Golden Stag, uh, there's not many people in. It's not as packed as it was last night. Uh, Katiana is no longer there. Uh, you can see Victor is behind the bar. Um, sort of scrubbing away you can see him fiddling on with uh, a couple of the barrels it looks like he's changed out a couple of the barrels and is currently trying to clean the lines through doesn't he notice you uh, immediately as you walk in uh, there's a few other patrons in there okay right so in there you see a male uh, gnome um, looks to be sort of just reclining having his lunch uh, he's got sort of dark brown hair uh, a face that says, I don't love anyone. Um, it's just sort of... He has an air about him that would suggest he wishes to be left alone. And you also see... Uh, ooh, who else is in there right now? The gnomes have special chairs. The gnomes have what? Special chairs, like high chairs. Uh, cushions. They have their booster cushions. Yeah, yeah. You can see, you can see that there is like a variety of different chairs all up in here. Um, request for, no for people of all people of all heights are welcome in the the Golden Stag. Is it like uh, Lord of the Rings, where it's like some nice Hobbit-sized rooms available? <laughs> it comes in pints. <laughs> That's why you got so fucked up. <laughs> yes. Here he is. You see a uh, tall, lithe, uh, dark skinned human uh, sitting on a table by himself, sort of staring into the fire. Uh, he's got a mug of ale in one hand and an untouched plate of food in front of him. Uh, there's a beautifully ornate longbow sitting by the side of his chair as well. And he's just sort of quietly staring off into the fire. Must be a special unbrudent today. Yeah, they're the only two people you see in the uh, in the Golden Stag currently. So as you all stand there quietly in the doorway, uh, Victor finishes what he's doing, turns around and goes, Ah, welcome back, my friends. My words, look at you. Where have you been? You look like you have been to hell. Almost. You're covered in mud and everything. You're all wet. Katiana says you are going to find your uh, your friend. I see you found him. Well done, well done. You had much to drink last night, little man. You told many high tales. Did I? Mm, yes. You seem to be quite taken uh, with one of the female guards last night. Did you, uh, did you get lucky with El Chanel or not? I've got no fucking idea. Ah, you Only she's undead and has a lot of mission last night, anyway. What can I do you for? Would you like, uh, as it looks if you all want food and some drink, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to rest. I need to think about my life choices right now. I'm not <laughs> feeling too good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to go and lay down. 
Okay, well, you know where your runes are, they are upstairs. I'm just gonna slump down in the nearest chair and just say, Victor, I could eat you. Please, can I have some food? And just head in hands, just like. Ugh. I realize now I've got Victor and Teleki's accents mixed up. Allow me to make a slight adjustment. <laughs> <clears throat> because, well, if you ate me, uh, Katiana would not be so happy with this. Uh, but I think I can find you something just as, uh, as filling. And he gives you a rice pile. You're in there. Let's have a look and see uh, what is on the menu today. Now, just the rest if you want some food too. It's a little uh, Sindri, you're going to bed, you've said, so. Yeah, I'll, I'm, you I'm, I'll have food before I go. Yes, sausages and food. And drinks. Katiana's been cooking up something very special. We have no sausages today, but we do have uh, the spicy jambalaya with crispy eel skin strips. Mm. <laughs> eel skin. Oh, right. <laughs> ear, ear skin strips. Where's the ear coming from? Oh, the, it's a delicacy. Yeah, everyone oh. loves jambalaya. It's, it's, it's wonderful. What's the other option? What uh, we, we, we eat in Brasco. Are the islands of the moon actually J Jamaica? <laughs> Not quite. But the, the no, you can't make a history track, so never mind. Uh, the rest of you, the rest of you that know your history would know that prior to prior to the Lord of Whispers um, campaign of Whispers, this was um, pretty much like the Caribbean islands. These islands. That's just sad. This is how much they've changed. <laughs> Was there an other <laughs> option yeah. to the eel skins? <laughs> there is uh, oat bread and white cheese with a mug of cider. I'll do. Oat bread and white cheese all round, yes? I'll have one of uh, everything. Jambalaya. Jambalaya, okay. So we'll take the orders. It's fine. Um, this is, again, it's uh, no money for you. It's uh, free, of, free of cost. The, Shuffles off to the back. You can hear him uh, having a a quick chat with Katiana. You hear her go, "Ooh, yes, wonderful." Um, scant minutes later, your food arrives and is plopped down on the table by Katiana. Uh, she puts it down, and goes, "I hope you found your friend." Yes. You seem to be in quite a hurry this morning. <laughs> yeah, we found him. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, enjoy your food. The less said um, about it, the better. I think. <laughs> I'll leave it to it. She sort of rubbed her hands on her apron and uh, shuffles off back to uh, to the kitchen. I don't know how any can feel like eating flesh after the things we seem to do. Uh, crispy eel skin, though, mate. I mean, come on. <laughs> mm. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah, legs already the halfway <laughs> through. Like, <laughs> is <It's> spicy. Uh, <laughs> the hint of citrus. Um, uh, some sort of, some sort of um, tangy, tangy vegetable sauce. You're not quite sure what it is, Leo, uh, but it is fantastic, absolutely that fantastic. Yeah, it's 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 Levi roots in a bowl. It's it's lovely, lovely stuff. Everyone, everyone in there, Braskov loves that dish. Right, so you guys, uh, you're just gonna eat your food and go to bed. Right, yeah, that's my plan, yeah. There's two interesting characters in the bar, though. None of them want to be talked to. <laughs> I know, but they're the best of the team. One of them's got a really interesting NPC bow. I was going to say, as, as someone who often doesn't want to be talked to, definitely do not go and talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Arwen, as you go outside, round the back to the stables where Modra is still... Uh, sitting there, you dash quickly through the rain into the warmth of the stables. Um, the, the familiar smell of straw and uh, sort of horse shit. Uh, it's quite comforting to hear just sort of wafts over here. It's a very warm environment. Mm, uh, comforting mm. horse shit. It's like a. I don't hero. Know shit. <laughs> you can see two familiar ears sort of perk up in the end stall, and there's like a. A furry face pokes out 
and sort of eyes you, side eyes you, and sort of does like a bit of an excited wiggle. Uh, Madra's obviously expecting some more apples or carrots. Well, I'll give him, if I have an apple, I'll give him an apple. Give him ah, a see, you wouldn't have gone outside without an apple for Madra. Yeah. Uh, takes it off you and munches it happily. Uh, just sort of ruffling her hair and munching happily. Flicks the tail a bit. You see, she's totally unfazed. Uh, this is like a holiday for Madra. Uh, as long as she's not having to walk the trail back and forth with heavy loads, she does not give a fuck. <laughs> Madra's living yeah. her best life. Well, well that is uh, our own happening. She can go to bed or whatever. It's too early in bed. You can go relax or whatever. Outstanding. No, I just think she's not going anywhere tonight. She's not like journeying out unless like someone gets in some other dangerous situation. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, right. So you guys can all take a a nice long rest. So you all manage to eat your food, fill your bellies. Uh, do you want to converse with each other at all before going to bed? Is there anything you want to discuss? Or straight to bed? I mean, I'm just... I feel like we should talk to those guys, man. <laughs> well, you can talk, talk to them if you want to. <laughs> no one's stopping you. Yeah, I think I'll stay up and uh, talk to Bo, man. <laughs> okay. We're gonna come back in the morning. He's gonna be just shot full arrows. <laughs> as long as he's got his pants, he'll still be doing better than me. That's true. Pants are good. Okay, so the rest of you are gonna take yourselves up to bed. Leo, you're gonna go over to the dark-skinned human, staring off into the fire, the thousand-yard stare. Yeah. yeah. That's the guy. Okay, so as you approach, he makes no move. It's as if he doesn't even hear you or doesn't even register your, your presence. Okay. <laughs> it's going well. Um, <laughs> okay. I guess, uh, let's start with, uh, Do you know the... come here often? <laughs> Do you know the song on the ball of Braskov? <laughs> So, let's see. Uh, right. So he's sort of facing the fire, staring off like that. And as you say, come here off, and he just sort of. slowly turns towards you. <laughs> like that. Uh, silently. You can see his haunted eyes tell of nights racked with terror. The nightmares he has seen are written across his deep brown skin. He sort of stares at a point maybe six inches behind your head. Wordlessly. Long night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the nights are always long for me. And his eyes twitch a bit. It looks as if this guy hasn't slept in weeks. So it's a fine bow you've got, sir. <laughs> it looks down as he goes. Yes. I am the hunter. For here. My name is Tisla. Atsi. What is yours? Uh, I'm not from around these parts, and uh, you can call me Leo. Well, Leo. This is a pleasure to meet you. Is this the guy that knew about the woods? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The Black Oaks. Yeah. So. What, what does one hunt around these parts? <laughs> I 
You definitely are not from around here. What you need is a good icebreaker. See, from around here, in the Blata Valley, you do not hunt. You are hunting. So, you're quiet enough to avoid those that wish to feast on your soul. There are deer. Rabbits, other wild creatures. And he sort of recoils a bit. His eyes seem to roll back into his head. As if he's fighting off something and he looks back towards you. But many cannot avoid the things that hunt in the night. What is it that you do, Leo? Well, I've seen some shit myself recently in these last few days. Usually telling stories of uh, of what's been going on, and it's a very strange place around these parts. I don't like this guy. <laughs> Quite scary. Tell me, what have you seen? What nightmares have you experienced? They sometimes say a problem shared is a problem hard. <laughs> well, I'm just going to get another drink and I'll be back in a moment and I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, I'm going to get another drink. Okay, as you do, he just sort of goes back to staring into the fire. Like, cool, standard man. Skyrim NPC, just... Back into the fire. Yeah. Uh, so as you approach the bar, another drink, you can see uh, Victor has been watching your uh, discourse with Stizzler. And you come up to the bar and goes, That is a man haunted by nightmares, Leo. You probably will not get too much conversation out of him. Yeah, I was going to ask you about him. It seems a bit uh, out of it. Might just leave that one for now. Yes, many of us do. Huh? He believes he is cursed. Well, can, I, can I have that ill to go? Have... Yes, takes this one to bed. <laughs> I will leave my exposition for the morning. And he will uh, give you a, a, a mug of a, a crisp golden ale for you to take to bed. Good times, mate. I'm taking it to bed. Wonderful. <laughs> so you all have a, a full night's sleep. Um, some of your dreams are interspersed with flashes of gnashing teeth and rending talons being chased through the woods. Flashes, flashes and flickers of the traumas that you've experienced for the last few days. You wake on the cusp of dawn very early, as you went to bed quite early in the day. So this would be in real world time, probably somewhere between 4.30 and 5 you're waking up. Um, you can see the sky outside is still quite dark. It's only just starting to brighten ever so slightly. And you can hear that there is sort of, uh, no sound from the tavern downstairs. It's empty. It's quiet. There's a light wind. And a light rain. So you can descend into the common room of the Golden Stag. Uh, where you see an unfamiliar face behind the bar. Uh, there is a huge male goliath behind the bar sort of light grey skin rippling muscles sort of uh, wiping the bar down and he's got a the apron on and sort of moving back and forward doesn't seem to give you much much notice as you come into the common room
Okay, so as okay. you all stand in the common room silently, he looks <laughs> over to you all and goes, <clears throat> What will it be this morning, heroes of Braskov? Breakfast, coffee, or a swift exit? <laughs> Breakfast and coffee for me, please! <laughs> And for me, I, I don't. Point. I don't believe we've met. You seem to know who no. we are. What's your name? I'm Torlek. Nice to meet you. Torlek. He offers a huge mitt out towards you. You can see it's greasy as all hell from like the cleaning and the work he's been doing. I am Atan. Cool. We'll shake his hand. Like, nice to meet you. I am helping. Victor and Katiana. I am the baker. I turned the baker. Goliath Baker. Hmm. Need that too. I moved the millstone by myself. No need for a mill with the sails for the wind. It do with the muscles and flexes. Just showing off. But Mira is taking care of the mill today, so I help Victor and Katiana. I'll get you breakfast. I'll just give him a nod and sit down. Okay, so he comes over after disappearing into the kitchen and very unceremoniously just, just plonks down bowls of porridge in front of everyone and a big pot of coffee. Yes. Uh, in the middle of the table, there's a few sort of cups, uh, glasses, and beakers. He's like he's not really paying too much attention uh, to the the implements for breakfasting that he gives you. Here, eat this. I will be over there. And he points back towards the bar. You can see he just sort of stands behind the bar and he's just staring at you, just watching you eat. Weird place. Fair enough. I'm just straight in, straight in on the coffee, straight in on the porridge, just, yes, food. Down with that. I guess we should decide where we're going next. Mm. Well, I mean, we've got four kind of big options if we want to help, right? So first of all, does everyone want to contribute to this because I want to help these people and I think that we can make a a difference if we do and second if you do want to help if you're on board where do we start the porridge is good yes <laughs> I grind oats myself big pestle eat, right. eat the porridge make you strong like a ton it's very nice of time, thank you, mate. You are welcome. <laughs> so, what do we think? <laughs> well, I'm in. I we already, the, I yeah, obviously thought we had some kind of destiny to help this place. I'm willing to see it through. So, I would, my vote would be to uh, fin finish off what we started with the ghouls, but I'm open to the suggestions. Seems wise to yeah. me, Godfrey. What about what about the girls, Jess, Arwen? What do you think? I mean, I'm not in a hurry to go back to the golds, but not me neither, but... you know, I do agree. Way. It's probably a good thing we can be doing. Yeah. Also, so I forgot it at the time yesterday, but I do have mage armor that I can do three times for <laughs> the squishy ones amongst us. Oh my god! Why were we actually hitting these ghouls? By yeah, the way, what was there? What was there? Yes. An army of ghouls that could be used to attack the town. To what the worry if the if oh, the right. siren comes back that way, she'll gather them up and use it to assault the town. But oh. she could come in any of the other directions as well. So you know, it just means one less army on the borders. Ghouls are quite chompy, so yeah. Yep. <laughs> they do seem to be a pretty immediate threat. Like an owl uh, walking. And she'd already pissed off. Hello, ground, 
Godfrey would not know that. Really? <laughs> yep. Okay. You've battled yeah. ghouls before. Uh, on the subject of hallowed ground, I feel like I uh, quite a bit you've about never that. seen a ghoul interact with hallowed ground. I suppose. What about taller? No stories? Mmm. Stories? Uh, you can make a, a history check and Torlek Torlek can make a history check as well <laughs> Oh, I only rolled an 8 Well, I have got plus 6 to history, so 20 20 well, Between the two of you uh, you suss out that hallowed ground is still very unresearched because it's so very rare uh, for hallowed ground to actually appear or to be somewhere. Uh, and for the creatures of the night to interact with hallowed ground, they've either got to be attacking the place or stumble into it. Um, but in your knowledge, between the two of you, the, the history that you can remember, Hallowed Ground is said to protect all who reside within from the forces of darkness without. It deafens the whispers, quietens the whispers, and deafens those to them. Right. Well, that's so, real. I was just trying. I was basically trying to work out if one of the groups of enemies couldn't enter, so we could leave them for last. But. We don't know about any of them, and it won't make a difference. Mm. I mean, the... With... That history check between the two of you, the only group that you believe might be... sort of... Would, would be the biggest unknown would be the Poisoned Fae in the Black Oaks. As we don't... You, would, you don't quite know what sort of very meta gamey what category they fall into yeah because there's the rest are all sort of very un undead yeah. um, and if you think back to the strigoi that were caught inside the hollow ground when it went off and they all burst into flames and showers of sparks uh, it wouldn't be an unreasonable assumption to assume that that would happen to other undead okay if they were within hollow ground so potentially the poison fear could be the most dangerous if they could just um, like not be affected by the hollow ground. But also our uh, turn on deads wouldn't work. <laughs> so there's that to consider. My vote is that we strike while the iron is hot. We go back to the strangle thorns. We manage to thin some of the ghouls out. We're all back at full strength. We have two clerics who can do some quite decent damage to undead i think that we that would be a good starting point i think we have the best chance of doing some good there and it might sort of weaken darkness's grasp as a whole if we manage to punch a hole in the the ring of bad shit around <laughs> uh Braskov. sounds like a plan that makes sense yeah for that, you can take some bardic inspiration. <laughs> it only lasts ten minutes, you know, Bobby. Hmm? It only lasts like ten minutes, you know. Well, you can take it when it's ready. <laughs> You've <laughs> came out the bardic inspiration from me. Well, thank well, you, what's sir. It's crap. Is Indri on board with this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got no cause to uh, have any complaints or issues. So, um, I will say yay. Um... <sighs> And do what I can, where I can, when I can. Okay. So, do you guys want to just set off straight away for the Strangle Thorns? What do you want to do? Do you want to get prepared? Do you want to get some more information on them? Yeah, we, should talk, we should talk to that guy that, that said we had information on it. But, uh, yeah. Wherever he might be now, like. 
Uh, remind me of the guy's name behind the bar, I can't remember. Atan! Atan, that's right, how could I have forgotten your name? I'm so sorry. We're looking for another Goliath, I think he is. His name's Va'ant. Va'ant! Yes! <laughs> Atan like Va'ant! Can you tell us where we might find him? Yes! Va'ant! The woodcutter! Live by the river. Look for the wood mill, and you will see their houses. They have axes in the doorposts to show that they are woodcutters. Woodcutters? Woodcutters. Woodcutters? Wood There's cooters. Get the cooters out. But now, you may catch him. He will not have left yet. He's got the cooters. Thank you, my friend. I suggest we go then, guys. Yeah. Let's begin I'll follow as we you. mean to go on. Okay. Nice. So you guys head outside uh, of the Golden Sky into the uh, slightly cooler morning um, with the wind blowing. It's a light misting rain. Um, it seems like uh, it rained all night quite heavily and it's, it's sort of just tailing off now. Uh, as you walk sort of down towards the uh, southwest of the town, down towards the, the mill, you can hear, uh, see the wood mill, uh, wood smoke rising from it. Uh, you can see the small sort of scattering of, uh, of, of expertly crafted uh, wood, wooden houses uh, with the huge, big sort of wood cutting axes sticking out of the doorposts. As you walk around, sort of come down towards them, you can see the huge imposing form of the ant. Uh, Standing over a, a wheel sharpening his uh, his huge wood cutting axe, uh, muscles glistening in the uh, the morning misting wind. And as you uh, as you approach silently, he turns around as if almost hearing your footsteps over the uh, the grinding of his axe. Just nods at you all. We've been told that you're the expert on the ghoul woods. This is true. What and no, the strangle thorns. Yes. But and cut wood there when the ant need. The trees there. Old special properties. Good for weapons. The black iron wood, good for weapon. Tis bad place though. Full devils, fiends, and things that will feast on the flesh. Why do you wish to go there? Uh, hopefully to destroy the ghoul threat, mm. or at least diminish it. When Va'ant was last there, Va'ant came across the cave in the mountain, in the wood. Va'ant got very bad feeling from this cave. The hairs on Va'ant's body stand on end. Va'ant felt sick in the heart. Many ghouls surround this cave, but aren't believe foulness lives there. Sounds like a target. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. But aren't would remind you though that trees do not fall from a single axe swing. <laughs> Is that like a proverb or? Mm. <laughs> Think on this. I think, I'm to Uncle Iro. I think he's trying to say that one assault is not going to cure the problem. Well, potentially. Well, this is going to be our second time, isn't it? So. Yeah? Yeah, Bobby. This is 
Round two, yeah. so we're definitely over. <laughs> You're a wise fellow, Varnt, but we need to take the first swing if we're going to fell the tree at all. So it seems like as good a place as any to start. Can you show us or tell us where this horrible looking cave is? Hmm. When you say the first part about the first swing, there's a there's a smile that comes across his face. Uh, his one good eye sort of tears up ever so slightly. <laughs> oh, you God. sound... You sound like Va'ant son Baras. He liked to fell tree in one hit. I will show you the way. And he will uh, sort, of, sort of hunker down in the dirt. And you can see as he starts to like draw lines in the dirt, um, he's drawing the road and the bridge out of Braskov. This is across the bridge, turn south. Follow the river for half a mile. Then you will find trail into Strangle Falls. Old road run through there. Do not go north into the wood where the ghouls are thickest. Death is all but certain. Take the south path into the wood. Follow the old road. It will take you towards the mountain and the old mine. From there you will see the cave. But beware. Watch your back. The ghouls know the wood better than anyone. They do not be affected by the strangle thorns, the briar bush. Their skin rip and tear, they do not seem to mind. It pays them no pain. For us, though, we must tread soft. Remember it. Thank you. This trail, could you get a cart along it? Once, perhaps, when the mine was active. The mine has not worked for many, many years. The trail is in disrepair. A cart would slow you down to the point of death. So noted. Why is the mine not active anymore? Did it dry up, or was there another reason? Probably all the fools. Could be all the chomp. Mm. <laughs> There are none alive now that know the answer to this question. Chomped. Trying to work out if there's been an increase in the chomping. And what about you, Va'ant? When you go into the Strangle Thorns, when you have to, what precautions do you take? Is there anything you know that could help us if we need to go there? Hmm. But Ant does not need to go for a while now. So Vaant could share his supply. Yes. Though it is not the weather. It may still work if the rain subsides. But Ant will get for you. You see. So gets up off his haunches and opens the door to his house disappears inside. And you can hear a conversation going on between Vant and two other sort of like deep female voices. Um, Split personality. There's a pause. And then he appears with a wooden crate full of uh, vials of thick, viscous, sort of black red liquid. Uh, he puts the crate, he hands the crate to you, Tolek, because this uh, Va'ant and Baras used when we go to strangle thoughts. Cover your body in this. The foul smell help disguise your footsteps. Yeah, I'll take, take it from him and give him uh, a nod of thanks and say that's going to be very helpful for us. Thank you. Mm. 
but Ant will not. If there is nothing more, the ant must work. The ant has the work of two to do now. I'm not gonna uh, ask about the rats. <laughs> nods towards you, Leo. It's good to see you. He's gonna shoulder his huge fucking woodcut and axe. And look at you all again. Good. Take care. Watch your step. And he's just sort of striding off toward the uh, the south gate. Well, I feel like we need some kind of distraction to draw them away from the cave while we investigate. Mm. We do have a no. Yeah, that. we could hang them in the tree again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Why not? Why not? Are you doing your question, a question. If we if one of us dies in the bramble woods, would that make it hallowed ground? Depends how you died. Mm. I'd be dying in a good way. Depends on your deeds, whether you are if you like die to save us or something maybe. But if you just right. died like a fool, probably not. God, With yeah. shit in your pants and yeah. no sword in your hand, I'm sure <laughs> that would make it hallowed ground like I think you might I think you might actually make it worse. <laughs> More gold spawn on your corpse. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Shit. Sure brown ground after that. Oh, God damn. Uh, uh, I'm, while everyone's poking fun at Sindri, I'm going to uh, hand these vials out around the group so that everyone's got. I mean, is there enough for everyone to have one? There is another. There is one each. Yeah. Hooray. A vial. It's disappointing we can't get a cart along. I was thinking we could just take like barrels of oil up there and just pour it into the cave. Just bring <laughs> them all. You could each carry a barrel. <laughs> Isn't the barrel like the same size as me? Bigger, but yeah. Maybe you maybe you just run on top of the barrel and it rolls. Ooh. You could that... definitely get two, you could definitely get two on Modra. <laughs> yeah? We'll see. <laughs> I, mean, I was the, gonna say, I imagine someone is not a fan of that plan. The, the last thing we want to do is be slowed down by anything. True. Well, yeah. I mean, it's... <clears throat> the, the thing is, if you took oil and stuff, you could potentially take out loads at once, but it'll be harder to get there. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it'll be easier to get there, but you'll have, you'll have to fight it. We'll have to fight them all directly. Yeah, I guess it'll be, more. You'll be easily overwhelmed. Mm. He's been resting a while. I mean, can we not get some bottles and just make a fuck ton of tiny Molotovs? Mm, maybe, yeah, that could work. Be easier to carry. <laughs> yeah. But could work. Also, it'd be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's actually a really good idea. I do love the smell of burning ghouls in the morning. I mean, especially if we're going to be fighting in a cave, something for area denial like that would be brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bottleneck and bombard him. Don't I have a uh, Don't I have a brewing kit that can help with this? <laughs> uh, you can You can make um, uh, tinctures with your brewing kit to make Molotovs. Um, you uh, You could do, but I mean the bottle would be like this big. <sighs> I'm not looking at the screen. Give me a second. It literally, like... How big? Not very... <laughs> like a vape juice. Thing. All right, okay, no, no, that's, that's no good. It'd be okay for personal defense, but not for area denial. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Go, we could go to the general store, I'm sure he's got loads of empty bottles and things. Or we could go to the bar, where the barkeep is friendly with us and probably has True. loads of empty bottles. Doesn't the yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, his house. <laughs> we could go there. <laughs> it depends whether or not okay, the, you the alcohol they've got will be good. <laughs> Might have to buy some oil to make proper ones. Okay, so should we just go to a general store and look to get supplies to make these Molotovs? It sounds like that's like a generally accepted uh, plan of action right now. You got my vote. Glenn, take us to that place, please. <laughs> We're not riding Glenn around. <laughs> Away, Bart Glenn! <laughs> Away, Bart DM! Carter. The old warehouse of a building. As you approach, you can see 
Uh, physically imposing, large belly, dark skinned dwarf, Vathlan, sort of pulling open the uh, the two doors for the day's trade, sort of pushing them back in the uh, in the mud. He turns around and goes, ah, it's good to see you all again. So early this morning, though. What can the Bathlen do for you? Please come in, come in. If you break it, you buy it, though. <laughs> God, tell Bathlen what it is you want. I guess we just want <laughs> oil and wicks. That man walks back in the bar. And bo- well, I thought we were going to we... try and get the bottles from the bar. We can do, but are we guaranteed to get the bottles from the bar? We might as well find out how much he's going to sell them for, just in case. Yeah. So, um, we come to buy goods for crafting some uh, liquids. So we need glass bottle containers, um, yeah. oil, the. Um, wicks, so the. like rope, um, and igniters. The. I have all of these things. In my shop, I can sell you these. Sounds quite complicated what you make. But hey, it's your money, not mine. <laughs> well, well, the reason the reason we're doing this is to try and uh, help the city know. out. We're, we're going to firebomb go- some ghouls. We're going to firebomb some ghouls and try oh, and expand our reach. Firebomb, yes, yeah. yes. Bethlehem has made quite a few of these in his time. Uh, though in my experience, all you need is a bottle, some uh, flammable liquid, and a rag. Usually works quite well instead of rope and igniters and things. Then we'll, that's what we need. If your expertise is greatly appreciated, um, what's it going to cost us? How many bath bombs would you like? Bath bombs? Bath bombs? How many can we carry? That's the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> um, say so a dozen, because there's six piece of body us. afterwards. I'm gonna say two dozen. Two dozen. Because there's six of two us. Dozen. So two dozen, that's two apiece. What? Oh, it's like four apiece. Four apiece. Four apiece. <laughs> four apiece. Four apiece. <laughs> I'm tired, man. Give me a break. I'm mm-hmm. absolutely on my ass here. Um, yeah, yeah, four apiece. Yeah. Four piece, I think, is fair because you if area denial, uh, suppression, and emergencies, and then one for good luck. <laughs> Four piece, two dozen. Four piece. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, would you need the the bags to carry? Because you cannot put them, you know, in pockets. They will spill. Um, Beth has special harness to put these in. Okay, yeah, all well, right, yep, yeah, you're a good salesman. What, what you got? What's the crack? Come on. He's <laughs> like, he's doing me. Oh, I've got me Molotov belt. Anyone want to buy one of them? It's like, yeah, if he's got you. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to question him. He's got it. Molotov. This exactly. is like when you buy trainers. It's like, would you like to buy all the sprays and shit to go on? Exactly. As well? No, thank but you. <laughs> I tell you what, a bandolier of Molotovs is better than a satchel yeah, be of good. Full of Molotovs. So <laughs> yeah, come true. on. Yes. Okay, the bandolier and the bath bombs. I will sort this for you now. And he sort of gets up, his huge belly's yeah. getting in the way. And you can see him like very efficiently walking to uh, exactly where things are in the shop. He knows where everything is. Uh, he comes back with two crates sort of stacked on top of each other with uh, full of sort of old milk bottles. Uh, which he puts down. They'll go two thousand bottles. Uh, comes back with a small keg of, uh, of you can hear liquid sloshing inside it. He puts it on the desk. and goes, "It is a shame to part with this. It's uh, very good on a cold night, you know, but uh, works best in the bath bombs." Uh, he goes back and then he comes back with like a, like two dozen bits of rag. He goes, There's no charge for this. I have wine ground. Um, and get some cork stoppers for the top of the bottles. Uh, and then he brings back six beautiful leather bandoliers. Uh, one that will fit each of you. Uh, he's even brought a smaller one for you, Sindri. Sweet. Uh, he says, ah, yes, uh, 
Borgia make this for me. Uh, I don't know. She quite good with the leather. Uh, she make all the ants sort of equipment. So I asked her to make this for me. She did. It's good. Uh, right. Let us see. Uh, this will be. Uh, let us see. Uh, Thirty gold for everything. How does that sit with people's gold supplies? I've got 40 and 92 copper. <laughs> I have, have 2.8. I have 2.9. Why has everyone got so little gold? I was going to say, um, I don't even know how much gold I've got. <laughs> we all started with hardly any money, and I don't think any of us have, apart from the bard, have earned any money. Uh, I, I, I started with 50, so I've still got most of it. I don't even know if I outlined how much gold I started with. It de it depends on your background. Yeah, I rolled badly. I think I started with three. Yeah, I started with three. I don't even know if I rolled for gold. Well, it's only five <laughs> gold each, right? So... But most of them don't have five gold, though. Uh, these guys are poor. Okay, um... We, we which you got? Be... Uh, me? No. no, the guy calling everyone poor. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, how much you got? <laughs> Fucking I'm not... make five gold. For... You got ninety-five gold. Okay. What the living fucking deuce? I think um, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, because you played in the bar. You can contribute to that. Um. Well, I will give you two on, lads. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll give you two gold if you give him thirty gold. <laughs> I'll give him thirty gold. It's cool. Ah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Does anyone uh, want to barter with him? I mean, we're, we're accepting it on face well, value. Yeah. In his hand. Yes. Very good, very good. I give you best price. So, um, please, remember two things. Uh, be careful when you pour it in the bottle. Do not smoke when you have this on you. Okay. Uh. <laughs> they seem like very and wise words. You bought it, so you can break it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see, uh, he gets his pipe out and begins to write and goes, Ah, yes, I <laughs> almost broke my home rule. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we hurriedly and carefully take. remove the items I away from the burning oh, Please take, please take. <laughs> Someone else, please take. Uh, well, well every, everyone takes them, right? Yeah, everyone take some stuff. Um, I suppose we want to go back to the, back to the bar would be the best place to... Um... No, that doesn't seem like a good place to make a load of Molotovs. Somewhere but, outside, perhaps. Yeah, let's just do it outside <laughs> in the street somewhere, yeah. Right, okay. Can we yeah. find... I'll tell you what, why don't we go do it in the yard of the church? All right, yeah, so burn the church down, potentially. Well, not, so just somewhere the, away from the... buildings. Well, yeah, away from public eye as well would probably be a wise choice. Wasn't there an alley next to the Blood Mage's house? Let's go there. I don't mind if we burn his house down. That's yeah, that's a fair shout. Yeah, we'll go All there. Right. Yeah. Fuck that house. Uh, yeah, okay, so you can walk through the early dawn streets of uh, Brascop with a light uh, misty rain falling on you. Uh, you can see sort of lights in windows are starting to come on as the residents wake up for the, the day's grind. Uh, you walk down towards the, uh, the the tower of the Blood Magus. As you get towards it, though, you notice that there is um, uh, a long, blonde-haired, lithe female form wearing armor uh, standing outside the uh, the front door of the Blood Magus's house. And as you approach, Sindri, she looks ever so slightly familiar uh, oh, she watched walk down the street and then stares at Sindri with this sort of withering look and goes so you didn't manage to bring me a ghoul head after all your oh. loss little man it's a work in progress it's a, <laughs> it's a work in progress that ship has sailed okay Drink that's fine. what I was thinking Dear me. Well, what are you doing here? What's in that barrel? Go ahead. What's it to you? <laughs> I'm the guard. 
That's what it is. <laughs> Sindri. Hero. You clearly know who I am. I, I do apologise. I am remiss of, of a lot of information from the last day or so. Um, so back and goes, that is what they all say. <laughs> yeah, well, you know... She looked at Arwen and at Jess and goes, watch yourself around this one. His tongue may be silvered, but it's slippery like a newt. 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 <laughs> I mean, uh, selling myself short. Because it's wet. Um, yeah. Okay, well, not that it's any real business, but we're we're on a it we're on a is mission. My business. I am the guard. We're uh, carrying around a barrel of Bathlands Hellfire. Well, you, you clearly knew what it was then. Look, we're yes. we're, we're we're preparing for a mission to go back to the ghoul's territory. Um, and if you must know, it's for the benefit of the entire town. Um, if you sincerely want to know more, then help us out. We need a place to conjure some fire, some bath bombs to um, for our mission at hand. If you're inclined mm -hmm. to help us, we would be grateful. If not, please let us on our merry way. And I do apologize for anything I have said in the past. Clearly, I was drunk. Didn't know what I was doing, and believe you me, the rest can attest. I paid for it dearly. <laughs> He's learned Make something. Make a persuasion really. check with advantage. Say that again, mate. Persuasion check with advantage. After okay. that, <clears throat> your face all softens a little bit. Plus three. Or does it? Related. Are you wearing pants yet? I don't know. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> By Callum's response, no, I am free balling. If you were, fr I assumed you'd got dressed again. Yeah. I if you were free balling, everything this is going to be with disadvantage and everything uh, else. Nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm always, always the negotiation with the other guy. He probably wouldn't even talk to me in my state. So, also, no. pretty down. It's, it's it's a little bit chilly. Yeah. No, you're okay. I've got pants on. Uh, right. Okay. Advantage roll. Persuasion, not that oh, one. Great. Oh. Thirteen. She just sort of looks at you and then looks. Ooh, can I use bardic oh. inspiration? Not on yourself. No, no, you can't. You have to inspire yourself before. Adam. Looks at Arwen. Looks to Jess. <laughs> You've already rolled, mate. Bollocks. Looks at Arwen. She looks to Jess and she says, "How did he pay? Do tell me." Last I heard, he was going to go and kill all of the ghouls in the Stranglethorns by himself and bring me back the head of the leader. How? Please leader? tell me how he paid. Mostly with his dignity. <laughs> oh. I, got chomp I got chomped on. I got poisoned. I was within an inch of my life. My colleagues bravely rescued me at the risk of their own health. Believe you me, I stand here a humbled, humbled bard who is literally just trying to make amends. If I find a ghoul's head, regardless of what reward you promised, I will bring you one. I mean, you did just kill one perfect. before you got stuck in that tree. No, it's true. I tried to tell you the other night that I did not want a ghoul head. Regardless of this, if you are creating bath bombs, she points towards the gate, you do so outside of the town. Thank you all for your service. Thank you for your information. I turn around, I look at the party, and I say, we probably want to heed our words. Clearly I've pissed this wench off. I say that under my breath. <laughs> Um, and, I was about uh, to say, did you say that loud enough for her to hear? No, Actually, no I didn't. I'm going to roll to see if she heard that. Oh, God. Fine. Oh, Fine. That's a check. Fuck's sake, Sindri. Oh! Fine. Wench! Okay. Wench! <laughs> Get out of my sight. Gladly. Step towards you. <laughs> I just briefly step around her and just walk off. So. El Chanel will remember, remember that. That's gonna come back. That that is gonna come back to 
bite you in your pantsless ass syndrome. <laughs> ah, well, you know what? I seem to be on a trend of pissing people off and not remembering what I've done, so... Fuck it! Leroy to the out of town! I mean, okay. I can be spectacularly petty and just cast a fog cloud around her. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't mire yourself with my drama here. You, you're probably safer off just, uh, you know. Yeah, the whole, uh, like trying to benefit. save the town thing isn't going to work that well if we keep annoying everyone who you meet. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not, I'm not of uh, the right sorts at the moment. So, you know, we'll just go with it. Let's go to the edge of town and make some bath bombs. You guys can find your way back out of the gate. Uh, as you do, Sindri, you start and flash. You start to get flashes uh, of memory. You seem to remember sort of walking this way, very like side to side. It's like visions a bit blurry. It's dark. It's raining. You remember seeing the gates looming up uh, and you sort of stumble out of them, and the vision goes black again. Um, you make your way outside the gates. The rest of you have been here scant hours beforehand. Uh, you can <laughs> see the road sort of bends round out of Braskov and up north. And in the distance, you can see the the, the, yeah, the silhouette of the large stone bridge that crosses the uh, the Blata River. Uh, and on the okay. very far bank in the distance, you can see the dark mass of the strangle thorns and the some mountains that rise up behind them. Okay, let's shore up next to the uh, the foot of the bridge before we go. Uh, we even dare cross it. We'll make them here. Sound good? Next to the water. Sounds good. Sound good with me. Yeah, next to the water, just in case. I mean, yeah. it's oil, but yes, let's do it there. Yeah, you know, it's better than concrete it more hay it was, and. Uh, it was more for putting else. us out if uh, it went wrong. Yeah. So, how are you going to decant? the hellfire inside the barrel into the bottles. Carefully. Um, yeah, I will use... Let's have a look. I will use my loot. <laughs> what? Not my loot, sorry, wrong wrong instrument. Damn, I was thinking of something else then. The loot? Do I have maybe? a horn? Do I have a horn? I do have a horn. I do have a horn. We will use my horn to decant it into the uh, bottles. That's amazing. Like a funnel. Yeah, like a funnel. Exactly, Naomi. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this shit. Yes. Mm. Okay, that's fine. So, looking at this setup, you're going to need one person to pour and one person to hold the bottle and horn. Okay, who's the soberest and most stable out of all of us? Who has the least amount of PTSD? I mean, really, you should be holding your own horn in public, but... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hold a horn. <laughs> I am quite deft at handling a horn, so, you know. Yeah, I bet. So, I will hold the horn. Who's going to hold the glasses? I'm not for... Oh, I'm someone not needs to, you'll be holding the horn and the glass, Sindri. Someone needs to pour. From the barrel. Come on, kids. It's for the greater goods. I'm not Actually, actually who's, the strongest? who's the strongest? Who's the strongest? Uh, me, I think. And how much is your dexterity? Uh, minus one. <laughs> well, fuck. Okay, next on the list, who's the second strongest? With decent dexterity. My dexterity is minus one, but I'll be standing to one <laughs> side because I can guidance you. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Good call. Cool. Okay. okay. Minus one. Dexterity. No, my strength. Naomi, what's your stats for strength for dexterity? Uh, strength minus one, dex plus one. Mm. Sharon? My strength is plus two, my dexterity is plus two. There we go! Yeah. Sharon, Sharon, Sharon he's boring the barrel! Arwen for the win. <laughs> there we go. Logic, kids, logic. Right, okay, Glenn. We're going to attempt this. And we're going to have some guidance. Yes. And just in case, just in case, Sharon, I'm giving you bardic inspiration. That's a good oh, idea. <laughs> Just in case you need it for an ability check roll. Does the other bard want to inspire someone? Yeah. Inspire? I'll inspire everyone. <laughs> cool. Maybe just people who are doing it. Well, you see, I have yeah. plus one and plus four for strength and dexterity, respectively. But I've got to hold the horn because Naomi is absolutely right. One should handle their own horn. Yeah. Well, all right. Now I'll, I'll inspire you with my. Uh, Glenn, is this where you thought yeah. tonight was going to go? 
<laughs> Not quite, but I'm having fun setting the DC here. I just had a little thing in my head, and I set the DC, and then I thought, I'll add... I'll just add one for every bit of metagaming they do around this. Fine. DC I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that even if we weren't seeing particular scores, I would know that I'm not very good at fine tasks. Mm. Yeah, like... Until I fucking fall over and stuff all the time. <laughs> Alright, so, so I'll, I'll stand kind of be, beside them both, and uh, being as Sindri's quite good with his fiddling with fine hand gestures, I'll guidance Arwen instead. Um, because I'm pretty sure Sindri can, can aim his horn. So. Oh, okay. yes. Are you gonna... inspiring someone? Me? Yeah, no. I was inspiring Sharon. Right, how? Um, play, play a ditty on the horn before you get to work. <laughs> you don't want to be playing it after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just going to... Okay, I'm gonna sing a song to her as she's get, as she's pouring it. Well, I'm not gonna sing it. I'm gonna kind of let say the words because I don't know how this song goes to sing it. Find yourself a girl and settle down. Live a simple life in a quiet town. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. <laughs> steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. So steady as she goes. Your friend has shown a kink in single life. You've had too much to think. Now you need a wife. Steady as she goes. That's how I'm going to inspire. <laughs> is that like a sea shanty or something? No, no. It's a quiet song. It's a raconteur. It's your steady roll, Sharon. Your steady paw. How loud did you sing that? I kind of. Well, she's kind of like. Um, like ho she's holding the bow. I'm guessing we're pretty close at the moment. So, you know, it's kind of. I won't say hush tones, but very steady and like under, not a whisper, just just personal enough that it's anyone. A lower would... voice. Yeah, in a lowered voice, enough anyone within like say uh, a square, so what is it, five foot radius, can hear me saying it. I'm not bellowing it out. Uh... I'm good, right? Okay, so uh, is all the inspirations and guidances done? Yeah. How's Adam, I, I, I how's Adam just, inspiring I, me? That's why I'm, I'm, I'm inspiring with a good old fashioned slap on the back. <laughs> whilst I'm holding a fucking horn. I suppose I'd tense up and be ready for it. Yeah, cool. No, no, it's, it's beforehand, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know in the middle. Ah, fuck. I'm not going to do it while you're doing it. Alright, yeah. so you're going to slap on the back. There we go. But slap on the back inspiration. Right, so you guys can add your inspiration dices. Um, and those of you that have got guidance can add your guidance. So I need both of you to make uh, sleight of hand checks, please. Cool. Okay. Oh, uh, what does guidance add? A D4, D4. mate. But that's that's only for Arwen. I can only do it to one of you, and you've got higher decks than she has. So, uh, so. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh... And a D6 of inspiration. Oh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. oh. 12. <laughs> Altogether, 12. 18 for me. 18 for you. So, Sindri, this is a practice uh, familiar with you, just on a bit of a larger scale. So, you managed to line the uh, the mouthpiece of the horn up at the top of the bottle. Uh, you hold that nice and steady as Arwen heaves up the uh, uh, barrel of Hellfire and sort of uncorks the top of it and pours it all over your hands. <laughs> Some of it goes in the bottle, uh, but up to your elbows is soaked by the time she fills that bottle up. Okay. Next bottle, please! Are we going to do this okay. 24 times? Do I have to do this 24 no. times, or are you just going to do one for all? This or... next one is going to dictate... This next one is gonna. This next one is gonna dictate the rest of the bottles. I think it's a bit unfair. It's a bit unfair giving you that rule for the rest of the bottles. So I'll give you one more. Okay. Uh, this Guidance. time, 
This time I'm giving <laughs> I'm giving Sharon some more inspiration. Have two uh, bardic inspirations used. Mark them off your character sheet. Uh huh. One second. Yeah, give her a gentle shoulder touch and guidance her again. One second. One second. I really and this time, <laughs> this time, I'm gonna sing one more time. We're gonna <laughs> celebrate. Oh yeah. Oh right. <laughs> Stop dancing. Okay, wonderful. You are you should have been inspired by those carousing words. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck my ah. life. Have I got to roll again? Yes, I'm rolling now. Uh, I'm checking the movie again. The one thing everyone notices when uh, Arwen does pour the liquid out, it's not a viscous oil. This is a clear liquid that smells very heavily of alcohol. Uh-huh. Well, that's what he did say. It's good for a warm night, but even better as a Molotov or a bath bomb. Um, right. Have I got bardic inspiration, Adam? Nope. No, you're not. You're not giving it to me this time. Okay, well, you better hope. Remember, this is for all of the marbles. All the rest. I was going to say, this is for all the marbles, by the way. So, are you giving me it or not? Because if you're not, fair enough. Come on, mate, you got this. You got it. You already got it, man. It's fine. I have hand checks off both of them, please. Ha ha ha! 23. Nice. And so come on out. Right, so do I do the D20, D4, and D6 thing again? D20, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, no. Fuck my <laughs> life. Plus, really? I got plus two, that's three. I did six and the D4 as well, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. D6. No, it's not going to fucking matter. It's not yeah, I mean, technically, matter. you can't crit fail a skill check, but. You can't. You can get a six for a skill check, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was that? Um, you managed to fill 12 yeah. of the bottles. Okay. Uh, the ground all around the two of you is completely saturated uh, with this alcohol. Sindri, you are saturated from your hands to your shoulders. And Arwen, it is all over your trousers. You right, well... well well, we've bottled all these up. I'll give what well, says so it's, it's two there's each. Thirteen. Now. There's thirteen bottles in total. Oh yeah. So <laughs> that's two a piece. Plus While one. While you're divvying them up, would you guys care for some prestidigitation? Yes, please. <laughs> I was about to go to the river and wash myself off, but I'll take the prestidigitation, please. Very nice. I'll just delete that little note that I'd written there. Well, I'm, highly, I'm highly fucking flammable. Watch me burn. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm stoked again. I was about to say, I reckon X amount of direct sunlight and this stuff will go up. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> right, okay, so we've got two apiece. I'm carrying. The, uh, no, actually, I'm not going to carry the third one. I'm going to give the third one to one of the uh, front runners. So, Ben, you can have it. Thank you, sir. Ooh. Coolest of beans. Um, Plus, I feel that I owe you something a bit extra for the effort you went to save us. <laughs> Aww. Waste hug. Don't worry about it. Go for this one now. I didn't want to give it to cool. Callum because Callum can tends to fall over. The last thing I want to do is fall over and crush one of the bottles. Well, yeah, I have burning hands and shit as well. <laughs> oh, great. That's <laughs> burning hands while holding one of them. Fantastic. <laughs> burning hands and Molotov cocktails. Fucking go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I have made fire. We um, <laughs> light clear. She managed to uh, cork up the, the the thirteen bottles with the rag, get the rag nice and soaked, uh, ready to go uh, with these bottles. You put them in your bandoliers, which look a little bit empty now, um, a little bit perfunctory, but still you feel badass. Loaded up, tooled up, ready to go. Um, Do we all feel you... safe enough to go ahead with this now, then? Now that we've got some Molotovs, is there anything else that we want to consider? I think we're as good as we're going to We don't need to buy any more equipment anyway. <laughs> That's true. Then fuck it. Let's go. So, um, you follow Baan's directions. <clears throat> you turn south off the stone bridge. Follow the river back uh, up its course. 
uh, with the strangle thorns thickets and grasping thorny branches, white wood and black wood of the dead trees sort of on your right. There's a few hundred yards between you and the forest of, uh, of uh, death. And you walk down the, um, down the path uh, for a short period of time. Uh, in the very distance, you hear the familiar screeches. They sound very far off of ghouls roaming the woods. Uh, after about 30 minutes travel, you find the old mine path. You can see that at one time this was cobbled, possibly tracked. As you can see, some sort of like rusted metal uh, lengths sort of grown over. Uh, there's rocks are all out of place. Uh, but it is it's very rough hewn, um, hard going, but there's no trees or briar bushes that have grown over it, so it's a clear path through the strangle thorns. You can see it winds through the woods um, up towards uh, the side of one of the large mountains that is a, a few miles back uh, into the woods. Uh, you think this is your clearest path. You stand there, peering into the depths of the horrors of the strangle thorns in which you experienced just the other night. The rain dies off. The wind sort of lightens a little bit, and the stench of the area becomes apparent. You steal your nerves before you stride boldly forward along the mine. Hang, hang about before we say, should we put the ghoul concealer uh, on? I was gonna say before we stride anywhere, <laughs> I wanna slather up in yeah, ghoul that's a good repellent. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. We will I'm gonna give um I'm gonna give Ben Torlek. I'm gonna give Torlek and Jess my last two inspirations. Um, it only, just it only lasts ten minutes, remember. You might wanna see it like, game time. Like, Mm, okay, yeah. Thanks for the reminder mm. again. Um, All right. So as you uncork the uh, the bottles of thick red viscous liquid, uh, the foulest smell greets your nostrils. Uh, it smells like my underwear. It is, or are you just gonna slather it on? What was the first first part of that sentence? Get a what? You what's under? Uncork the bottles of thick red viscous liquid. The foulest smell hits your nostrils. Well, almost put it on. Put it in the back of the throat makes you gag. Slap it on. Yeah. Slap it on. Slap it on. Uh, cover yourselves quite well. Uh, Sindri, you're hungover, so make a constitution check for me, please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking <God>. hell! Yeah. <laughs> Yours is mixed with your own vomit as you uh, spew up the porridge that uh, Atan made for you earlier. You spew <laughs> that all down yourself and onto the grass in front of you. Just heighten the bad smell. Outstanding. You stand there, slathered in what you can only assume is minced ghoul entrails at yeah. the entrance to the strangle forms tooled up to the nines and ready to take the fight to these fox. Why does it seem every time I come into these bramble forms I end up toiled? 